Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my uh, briefing for the uh, Django Girls tutorial assignment, uh, which is part of the Django course. And um, uh, this isn't a lecture per se. This isn't a tutorial. That's why I came up with the word uh, briefing. Um, I just want to give you kind of a tour around what we're going to be doing and point out things that might not be so obvious. Okay? Uh, so, what I have up here on uh, the monitor uh, is a copy of the instructions for the assignment. All right? So, uh, we're going to be doing uh, the Django Girls uh, tutorial. And the Django Girls uh, are a pretty interesting organization. Let me, I think I talked about them in the opening lecture, but just in course, uh, in case you're not remembering, or I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, talk about that then. Let's just uh, kind of take a look at the uh, Django Girls. So the Django Girls, are a not-for-profit worldwide organization um, who, who, uh, whose goal is to inspire women to fall in love with uh, programming. Okay, and uh, how do they do it? Well, they do it uh, uh, with these uh, one-day workshops that they hold all over the world. Um, see if we can find these events okay so um, they are all over the world uh, uh, Africa South America Europe India the UK uh, the US the US um, the U.S. again, the U.S. again, uh, all over the place, okay? And they just want to, uh, number one, they want to create opportunities for women in uh, programming. And two, they want to, they want to inspire people who uh, either are, are only a little involved with programming or not involved at all. And they want to get them, and they want to move them along. And what do they want to teach them to do? Well, they think that uh, Django and Python um, are just a great uh, combination. As long as you're going to learn something, uh, why not learn? Uh, why not learn uh, how to get started with a framework like Django, um, so that you can do some pretty extensive stuff? Um, and so. Uh, they have their one-day seminars. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the one-day seminar. Okay, um, I think we have the link to that right here. Django Girls uh, tutorial. So in this uh, one-day tutorial, um, they get a, a, a whole range of people. I remember uh, I volunteered for one last year. Uh, I think they had about 30 participants. Okay, so these were 30 women uh, who had really various levels of uh, experience and expertise with uh, computing and with uh, uh, Python and with uh, Django. Uh, with uh, the web, all those things. And this one-day tutorial was for uh, your kind of middle-of-the-road uh, person. Uh, somebody who has some computing experience already. Uh, and they expected that they could get all the way through the tutorial in one day with help from uh, coaches. Uh, and so the people uh, come in, they have their laptops, they're already set up. Um, they, uh, 
they uh, go to the uh, tutorial page and and they read and they work from the tutorial and when they need some help they uh, they ask their coach now as a coach i remember i, I was at a i think I, I was at a table with uh uh, we had a lot of coaches, so we had like four participants, and uh, each of the two coaches had two uh, participants each. And I had some pretty, uh, pretty experienced, pretty talented um, uh, participants. Uh, one who, ha who had actually done some work with Ruby on Rails, uh, and she got through this um, uh, tutorial part. And uh, uh, a little bit after lunchtime. And then I, ha I had a person who knew Python, kind of knew the web, uh, that kind of stuff. Knew some Python, knew some web. And she got done with this whole thing at the very end of the day. I think we worked from about 9 until about uh, 5. And uh, we had lunch and breaks and... We had uh, some pitches on Python and uh, Django and all kinds of uh, cool stuff in between. Uh, so this is what I want you to do. What I want you to do is I want you to do what they do at their event in one day. And I want you to get through it in this one week. Oh, okay. And uh, again, what you can do is you can work your way through it. There's introduction installation they have an installation for chromebook there's how the internet works uh, probably go pretty fast for you introduction to working at the command line they work at the command line in their uh, uh, one day event uh, because uh, they they don't want people to have to have hefty computers, right? They're, to, they're teaching a lot of these courses, uh, uh, some of them in the third world. So they, um, so people, so they use a normal text editor, they work at the command line and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to do that, you can, okay? I need you to hand in a PyCharm project, which means you would not be working at, at the command line, you'd not be working with their tools. You'd be working with PyCharm like I, uh, I'm going to have you do in our course, uh, because that's what we're going to grade from. Okay? Um, so they've got a whole bunch of stuff. They talk about Python installation, code editors, all that kind of stuff. You should actually be through, um, uh, they have introduction to Python. Uh, you should know Python. So you should be start, uh, you know, take a look at all this stuff. But uh, what is uh, Django? This is a great place to start. Okay. Then they have a Django installation. Now, uh, one of the interesting things about the way they do uh their uh their installations is again they work with uh, uh python virtual environments and they work with the traditional virtual env okay um one of the problems i have with uh virtual env and the reason why we don't use it in my course is that uh the the virtual environment that has all the python package code in it uh gets plunked into your django project um and so it's very hard to submit it's very hard to zip up your project and and submit your project without also uh, including the virtual environment and it's too big okay so that's the reason why I have you work with uh, the virtual environments from um, from Anaconda. We use uh, the Anaconda uh, virtual ends. Okay, so uh, before I wrap up here, I'm going to show you how to get the kind of virtual end that you need 
uh, using uh, the Anaconda version. Okay. Um, and then they just get started, right? They teach you about uh, Django uh, models, uh, the Django admin capability. There's a section on deploy, and if you look at our instructions, it says it's optional. You don't have to do it. We'll have, we will have a deploy um, assignment that's part of, um, that's uh, the very last part of the um, uh, the uh, tutorial that I uh, created called Easy University, okay? And, and then uh, what you're good to do, going to do is you're going to deploy it to um, uh, Python anywhere. Now, can you do this uh, section? Yeah, you can. You're not going to get any special credit for it, but you might get some nice uh, satisfaction from it, okay? They teach you how the URLs work, the views work. Um, the, the, they talk about HTML, uh, query sets, which are mm, the way that we interact with the Django models. And the Django models are the manifestation of the relational database in our uh, Django framework. Uh, templates. Um, we extend our applications, we learn just a little bit about Django Forms, and then we have a pointer to what's next. Uh, okay, so the Django Forms are, are the last uh, changes that you're going to be making, right? What's next points us to, among other things, what we're doing next week, which is Django Girls Tutorial Extensions. So, can you look ahead there? Oh, sure you can. Um, but in terms of your work for this assignment, things to remember, uh, go all the way up to Django Forms, right? Um, you don't have to do the deploy, okay? In fact, we're not even going to grade the deploy. So, it's if you're doing it, it's for your own satisfaction. It's kind of fun. Okay, but um, that's what we're uh, telling you. Okay, now we, uh, I don't know how much, how much we've talked about yet about uh, uh, software versions, but software versions are pretty important to uh, Django developer. So let's go, let's find this little thing where they have us install Django. Uh, Django installation. Okay, so we go down to Django installation. Okay, and you'll see that uh, as part of your installation, you want to create a, a virtual environment that has the following requirements met. And that is Django, and this says approximately the version, this uh, tilde equal, approximately the version 2.0.6. Okay? This is exactly how you want this expressed. Uh, okay? Um, the way to read this uh, graphic is uh, you would have a file called requirements.txt. Uh, 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 um, that's how we document what uh, Python uh, packages we want installed in our environment. Okay, and the big one here is uh, Django 2.0.6. The other one that's going to be important for us is uh, Python 3.6. Okay, uh, there is a Python 3.7. It's out. People are using it, but we're not using it this year. Okay, because I, I don't want to change all the tutorials and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and uh, we're not using any Python 3.7 features anyway. Okay, uh, so um, 
And you can see here that the way that you can get a custom install of a version. So uh, version 2.0.6 is old. Okay. Uh, why, uh, why is it old? What's the new version? Well, I think today it's probably 2.1.5. There have been significant changes between uh, 2.0.6 and 2.1.5. When we move on to the next assignment that we're doing, uh, uh, not the next assignment, excuse me, but the one, uh, our big uh, tutorial, um, EZU, as I call it, uh, we're going to be using the new version of uh, Django. I think we're going to be using a 2.1.1. Okay, and that has the changes in it. Okay, so you want the version that matches the code that, that, that you know we're giving you to type in, and this matches approximately 2.0.6. Okay, so uh, uh, if you weren't using uh, Anaconda navigator to build your virtual environment well you would create a virtual env one of the old ones and then you would change directories and you would put this code in uh, pip is a uh, python package manager you would ask it to do an install this uh, task R says uh, get the requirements from a file and the file here would be called requirements.txt and this would be the only requirement in it, okay? And when I say approximately 2.0.6, what does that mean? It says you can have a version higher on the last uh, digit. So you can have 2.0.6 or 0.7 or 0.8 or 0.9 or 0.31, uh, but you can't have 2.1 point anything. Okay, and that's just what we want. It's going to work with our software. We, in fact, do not want exactly 2.0.6. So if, in fact, we said Django equal equal 2.0.6, we'd get exactly 2.0.6 if they could find it. But that is actually incompatible with the new version of our in-memory uh, database, which is called SQLite 3. So we don't want exactly 2.0.6. We want um, uh, the highest 2.0 that the installer can find, um, um, but we don't want any uh, 2.1 point anything. Uh, okay, now um, I'm going to tell you to not fool with uh, the way that they do it here, and I'm going to show you how to do this with our... Uh, uh, Anaconda navigator tools, but uh, I wanted to I wanted to go through what is what is here. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do this. Let's. Uh, I'm just going to pull this away for a minute, and I'm going to fire up uh, Anaconda navigator. And again, I'm I'm working on the Mac, right? Um, so, uh, let me shrink that it's come up on my other monitor. Can it get small enough? Almost. Okay. So this is Anaconda Navigator, which you should have seen when you installed it. So, um, uh, of course you go to Environments. Okay. And what I usually do is I usually uh, I usually call my uh, virtual environments E for environment for and then uh, uh, something. So what do I have? I have something called E for Django Girls uh, tutorial, and then I've got uh, 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 new Django Girls and Okay, they both will do what I want them to do, okay? Um, but we'll, um, we're going to figure this out as we go. 
uh, okay, I'm going to create a whole new one with some uh, ingenious uh, kind of uh, name. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to create a new environment. So I go down to the bottom here, I, I, uh, I click on uh, the Create button. Um, up here, it wants to know what version of Python. Well, 3.6, that's what we want to use. Okay, it's not the newest, but it's what we're using this year. Do we need R? No, we don't use R in this course. R is certainly a core, po core product. Uh, we use it in some other courses, but uh, we don't need all the code. Okay, and then you need to come up with a uh, name that's easy to remember. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, E4 uh, D G Tutorial. Okay. And I'm just going to call it that because uh, I haven't used uh, that name yet. And I create. And um, it shouldn't take too long. So we'll just kind of watch it go. It's loading the packages into it. Oh, okay. And here we can see it. Uh, we've got E4DG tutorial. And we have a lot of stuff, okay, In Q, including the uh, database, SQLite, okay. Uh, and we've got Python, uh, 3.6.8. That's fine. It's a 3.6. And we've got a whole bunch of different stuff, okay. Um, do we have a uh, Django? No, that would be right here. It'd be right uh, after uh, certify and before uh, libcxx. Okay. Okay. So not uh, not here yet. Could we install Django right um, here? Yeah, we could. It, it's not going to give us the Django we want though. Okay, so we can go up to the top and say, okay, show us what's not installed. So this is all the stuff that's not installed. And over in the search box, just type uh, Django. Okay, and the version that Anaconda wants to give us right now is uh, 2.1.5. Oh, well, that would be good if it wasn't inconsistent with the code in this uh, tutorial. Okay, the way a couple of the things work in the tutorial um, uh, need the older version of the code. Okay, so now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to an install. Okay, so in addition to all this automatic stuff that we've been doing over here with the graphical user interface, we can over here we can go to any one of the environments and say, I want you to open it for me uh, with in a terminal window. So, okay, I do that. So you can see from the parens that we're actually using our E4 DG tutorial. That's great. And because I'm in Conda, I can use the, uh, the instructions from the Conda cheat sheet. So for instance, I can say, Conda uh, uh, list. And this shows us a list of all the installed uh, software. Well, uh, again, no Django. Okay. Now, if in fact uh, we can't use the, the Anaconda graphical installer tools to get uh, the package that we want, Okay, and, and uh, typically that's when we want to get one that's older. Uh, well, then we're going to ha have to go down here and at the command line, we're going to have to use this. Uh, we're going to have to use this code that we see over in the Django installation, which is uh, we're going to need a requirements.txt file, and then we're going to need it to say uh, 
Django uh, tilde equal 2.0.6. Okay. Now, we do need other things. Like, we do want to make sure we're, we're using uh, Python 3.6. Because, but because of the nature of the way that we set up the virtual environment in Anaconda, we didn't have to worry about that. Okay, because we picked that when we built the virtual environment. Okay, so how do we get a requirements.txt file? Well, let me show you my project, which is already done. <laughs> okay, so I'm opening up a uh, PyCharm, and I'm going to open up my uh, my solution to the assignment that we have. And what are we going to call our project? Well, we're going to call our project something slightly different than what they call it in the um, the Django Girls uh, tutorial. Uh, and how do we know that? Well, let's let's actually go back and look at the instructions. Okay. Um, so, uh, the instructions, uh, so far, do the Django Girls, uh, tutorial, we have the link. Uh, you don't have to do the deploy section. It's optional. And again, you're not getting any, any credit for it. It's not extra credit. It's just, <laughs> it's there if it satisfies you. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, section says non-code, uh, deliverables. We're going to load Within the tutorial, you learn how to create a super user. Uh, we're going to be using the uh, Django Girls admin function, and we're going to log in. Create your super user with the name tester. Give it the password paren lower secret per, uh, close paren. If we all have the same username and password for a super user, then that's going to allow us to be able to test your code by logging right into it. Okay, we're not going to have to go create our own super user to log into your code. Okay, and we need sufficient test data present in the database to allow for testing all functions. So if you uh, follow the instructions, in the uh, tutorial, if you read through the website and you do what you're supposed to do, then you will uh, you, you'll have enough uh, test uh, data in your project uh, to get the whole thing done. Uh, okay. Now, what are we going to call our uh, project? We're going to call it our last name underscore our first name. Django Girls tutorial. That's what we're going to call it. Okay. So what? The, where is uh, mine? Well, let's just go back uh, to my um, to my Finder because I'm on my Mac, right? Uh, oh, I see where I am. Oh. Uh, sorry, so I'm in uh, uh, PyCharm, and now I'm going to say open, and it's going to give me a list, and it turns out it happens to be in my my home uh, directory. And my uh, project is called uh, Trainer Kevin Django Girls uh, uh, Tutorial. So I just highlight that and say I want to open it. And you'll see some work, and we'll see our we'll see our uh, thing uh, come together right here. Okay. So I forget. Uh, um, I forget what they call the various things in the Django Girls uh, tutorial, uh, but um, this is this is the high-level directory that we have. Uh, blog is is the name of an app, 
So we're going to have a subdirectory called blog. Okay, and then we're going to have, oh, we're going to have another subdirectory. Here's what they call that subdirectory. They call it my site. There's a subdirectory that uh, holds uh, a lot of configuration information. And um, uh, by convention, the name of this uh, subdirectory uh, and the name of the overall project uh, directory are the same, but not in the Django Girls uh, tutorial. OK, uh, so if, in fact, you use uh, 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 Django to uh, uh, to generate your Django Girls uh, project, your uh, your directory in here, instead of being called my site, would be called the same thing as your overall project. Mine would have been called Trainer Kevin Django Girls uh, Tutorial. Uh, we don't care whether you follow the naming convention um, my site on the inside or your name, last name, first name, Django Girls uh, tutorial, just as long as your project is configured uh, such that we're able to grade it. Okay. Um, down here under my site, I've already created a requirements.txt file. So if I open up that, what does it say? Django tilde equal 2.0.6. Okay, so I can, uh, I can actually run that, uh, the, the pip install with the Django uh, and get this uh, version by uh, pointing it to the requirements.txt file. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's do that. How am I going to do that? Well, let's remind you of where we are, okay? Uh, we're in Anaconda Navigator. We've we've uh, created the environment I called my E4DG tutorial. Um, we got uh, Python 3.6. We don't have any Django yet, right? So I'm going to go over uh, to my uh, Anaconda virtual env, and I'm going to click on that. Uh, uh, triangle and say open terminal. I'm in my virtual env, right? Again, I, I, I can use the, Conda has a bunch of uh, commands that you can get from the Conda cheat sheet. Okay, so Conda uh, env list will give you a list of all your virtual environments. Okay, Conda list will give you a list of what packages are installed in this virtual environment. And so now, um, what I uh, would do if I already had had my project is, um, and my project had a uh, requirements uh, a dot text, I would just uh, navigate to the point where uh, that was in the current uh, directory. Okay, so let's see. The current directory is, um, looks like it's my home directory. Okay, so we have all those things. So I would go to this uh, trainer Kevin Django Girls uh, tutorial. So let's uh, cd change directory, trainer Kevin Django Girls tutorial. Okay, and let's do an ls. And uh, there's the requirements.txt. It's right there. So it's right in the main uh, directory. I said it was in that subdirectory, but I was wrong. 
I've got mine right in the main uh, directory. So what's in that? Well, um, again, I'm working on the Mac, so I, I can just say cat requirements dot text, and it'll print what's in there. And it, it has that. So let's uh, let's take a pick ag again at what the instructions uh, said. They said that I could say uh, pip install dash r requirements.txt. Let's go do that. Okay. Well, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do it the cheater way. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take that and highlight it and uh, copy it. And then I'm just going to paste it into the command line. Uh, how about that? It didn't like that. Well, I changed my license today. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, Control V and put that in there. Pip install dash r requirements dot text. And now it's going to go out and start to build stuff. It's finding Django. It's finding Pytes. It in successfully installed them. So uh, how do I know that? Well, then I, I can say conda uh, list. And uh, what do we have? We have Django 2.0.10. Now, that's perfect. I'll tell you why. If we had gotten exactly 2.0.6, it doesn't work with this newest SQL Lite 3.26.0. Uh, okay, I had I had some students in my other class that found that out the hard way because they had just asked for exactly 2.0.6, and then when when they went to to test, they couldn't get the database to work. Okay, that's why because we asked for Django tilde equal 2.0.6. We got the highest version at 2.0, 2.0.10, and that works with that version of SQLite. Okay, good. So uh, there's my virtual environment. I'm, uh, I'm just going to take that uh, command line window and exit it and close it. And let's just go look at my uh PyCharm uh project again which is the way I would kind of like you to do it right and uh let's I'm having some password problems here so I'm just going to evaluate for free I updated my license this morning and now it's it wants the uh, password, which is this really ugly encrypted uh, password that I put on it. I don't want to take the time to find it. Okay, so uh, here we go. So uh, how do I get this thing configured to work, right? Well, uh, first of all, you you just uh, go and and you open the project. It should know it's a, Dan a Django project. Okay, I'm going to close the terminal here. I don't work at the terminal. I work uh, in uh, uh, with manage.py. Uh, so I'm just going to close this uh, terminal window. Okay, so let's look at how to configure it. Go up to PyCharm, uh, uh, get to preferences. And of course, there's going to be in a slightly different uh place if you're on the Windows version. Okay, and uh, under project, we have the thing for, we open up a project here, project interpreter. Now, the project interpreter is a uh, kind of shortcut name for your virtual environment. Okay, so uh, uh, do we want the new Django Girls environment? Well, that would work, but that's not the one I just created. So let's say, no, we don't want that. Let's go out to the the, the uh, settings gear, 
say we want to add another one. Okay, what kind of a virtual environment is? It's a conda environment. Okay. Um, is it new? No, we've already created it. So existing environment. Okay. And then let's go out here to the right and click on the three dots. And now um, the places where these are are different in, in uh, Windows and the Mac. I'm going to show you where they are in the Mac. I go to uh, Kevin Trainer, which is my home directory. And then I go down and find Anaconda 3. Anaconda 3. And under there I find uh, ENVs. That's what virtual environments are called in Anaconda. And then I want to, uh, uh, I have E4DG tutorial. And I'm not done yet because I, I have to go into the bin uh, subdirectory. And uh, it really does want the Python interpreter. So we, we are going to point it to the shortcut for uh, the Python interpreter, which is uh, Python. And say OK. And could we make it available to other projects? Sure, yeah, that's OK. And then let's just say OK. And we'll see that show up. Notice that we don't see Django here, right? So what we see at this point is we just see the things that were installed by into this environment by the graphical installer in um, Anaconda Navigator. So let's go down here, down to the bottom, and you can see this kind of Anaconda Navigator icon, and click on that to toggle, and you'll see the stuff that we installed with uh, PIP. And that includes uh, Django 2.0.10. Okay? So that's what we want. That's just fine. So are we done with our c configuration? No, we're not. Okay. Because uh, we want to go down to languages and frameworks. Okay. And we want to pick uh, Django. Okay. We want to make sure that the Django project root points to the outer directory that holds our Django project. That's called uh, Trainer Kevin Django Girls uh, Tutorial. And then we also want to make sure that that, that internal uh, subdirectory that holds a lot of the uh, settings and such is properly hooked up. We have to point it to where's the settings file. Now when I did this, uh, I guess I did this last year, I was uh, following the conventions from the tutorial itself, and they said to call that my site, so I did. Okay, and so you have to point to that, and how do you point to it? Well, um, again, let's go find that directory. So you go down to uh, Trainer Kevin Django Girls Tutorial, right? Open that up. And then you go down to my site. Okay. And then you want to find settings.py. Okay. And then you just say open. Okay. So once you've want, oh, oh, and the other thing that has to be checked is enable Django support. Because this is all grayed out unless you do that. Okay. So. If you create your tutorial project uh, the way that they tell you to do in the tutorial exactly, or um, um, whether you do it, uh, or as an alternative, you just uh, go to, to PyCharm and you say you want a new Django project, uh, that's fine. Just make sure whatever things are called and wherever they are, that when you configure this, that again, you don't only point to the virtual environment in the interpreter, but you also come down here to languages and frameworks into Django, and you enable Django support, 
you point to the root of the project. That's the enclosing overall directory. By the time you're ready to hand it in, it should have it should be called uh, your last name, your first name, Django Girls uh, Tutorial. And then whatever the subdirectory is that holds the settings, you've got to point to that file there. And then when you say, OK, um, it's ready to go. Now, what's nice is all that metadata about your project gets saved in the metadata file for the uh, PyCharm projects. So when you zip it up and you send it to us and we open it up, okay, when we open up your project, um, we're not going to be able to use your virtual environment. It's on your machine, okay? It's pretty big too. We You, you don't want to zip it up and submit it to us, okay? On the other hand, uh, so uh, when we go to configure it, we'll go up, we'll go to preferences, uh, we'll go to um, the project, and we'll look at the project interpreter. Um, I'm just going to use my environment that's uh, configured to work with this uh, tutorial, like the one that I have here. So I'm, I'm going to use that. And I don't want to have to go down here uh, to languages and framework and say and uh, point it to all the different parts uh, to your overall project and to the place where your uh, settings.py is. It should it should carry over from the work that you did on your own machine. Okay. Now, provided we've done that, okay. Now let's just uh, close all these, okay. Provided we've done that, then I ought to be able to go up to the overall uh, menu for a uh, PyCharm, click on Tools, and I ought to be able to go to Run Manage Pi.Task. That's where I do my testing, right there. Okay. It puts this into uh, the correct virtual environment, and it runs Manage.Py uh, in a kind of a shell. Normally, when you're working at the terminal, every time you want to do something with manage.py, you have to type in all the stuff that says uh, you want to run uh, Python and manage.py, and then you give it some instructions. Here, you can just give it the instructions. Now, something that shows some interest in data is a command for manage.py called show migrations, and it gives you auto completion so I'm just going to do that and we get all that so that's all working fine and um, of course how do you run uh, the development server you just do it with run server uh, enter enter and then you click on the uh, the URL that it, it gives you uh, and it came up on my other um, it came up on my other monitor here but uh, here's the sorry forget how I did that here's the Django girls uh, blog uh, at the end of uh, the tutorial it doesn't have the extensions in it. it doesn't have the stuff for next week but uh, here's what it should look like right here. Okay. So uh, that's all I'm going to show you. Right. Um, that's got some of the finder points of ways that we might be doing it slightly different than they're doing it in the tutorial. Um, that should give you, help you get your sea legs with uh, uh, PyCharm. Um, it shows you, I've also showed you how to create a, um, a virtual environment with, um, with Anaconda Navigator that just uh, it doesn't use the latest of the latest. It, it uses uh, a requirements file to get a particular uh, uh, version of uh, Django. 
that's uh, Django tilde equal 2.0.6. So uh, good luck with it. Uh, remember that we've got a, um, we have an online lab uh, coming up. That'd be a place where you could come and get some help and ask some questions, and we'd be very glad to see you there. So um, good luck. I'll talk to you soon, and uh, see you next time.